Tuesdays and Thursdays. Or is it Thursdays and Tuesdays? Oh, Tatty, it's the same thing. And it's at 20 to 4 on CITV. We adore her. We adore her. Doing things in her very special way. We adore her. Nothing sure You're the one that can brighten up our day. Hello and welcome once again to another Jack's Throwback Attack podcast. More magical memories coming up in today's episode. OK, so I'm pleased to have with me today Lizzie McPhee. Hello there. Hello, Jack. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yes, I'm very good. Thanks very much. No problem. Thank you for taking part today. Um, So we're here today to talk about Wizardora. Now, you were the second person to play the title role on the CITV series. Um, But first off, what were you doing prior to Wizardora? Well, it was quite interesting, actually. Um, I was actually doing a play called Sunspots. And it was very, um, it's a very strange occurrence. But during rehearsals, there was this that is a four-hander and um, there was another young girl, Emily she was called, and she kept going off for these recalls and auditions for this programme and it was called Wizardora, I'd never heard of it. And she kept coming back and and saying, oh I don't know if I've got it. Anyway, she'd go for another recall, she came back. Anyway, um, a couple of weeks went by and then I, I never thought any more of it because People were always going off for auditions when you're in a play. You know, you're always having time off to go off for a TV audition or something. And then I think my agent phoned me and said, um, I think somebody wants to see you for this part with Adora. And I, I think I might have put two and two together, but I wasn't quite sure. So then I went <laughs> for with <Adora. laughs> And then obviously it went OK. And then they called me back. And then, um, yeah, and then they offered me the part. And it was really awful, actually, because the producer and the director and the executive producer, they all came to see me in the play. And um, we were in the bar afterwards. And and then, obviously, Emily um, was there as well. And I never told her that I'd got the part because I felt really bad. I mean, I, we weren't really good friends or anything. So, and sometimes it's just how things go. But so that's what I was doing when I got with Dora. But it was also quite funny because it was a children's TV series, obviously. And the play was quite explicit. And there was like scenes of me having sex against the wall. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, I was, a, I, I was a graffiti artist. And so it was quite funny, but um they didn't seem to mind that anyway but yeah that's what I was doing when I got with Adora but I I did do a lot of um political theatre actually so it was quite weird um not weird but it was something very different for me to be doing a children's uh tv program yeah yeah you'd never done any children's theatre or television prior to that no nothing to do with children right yeah, not, I did a lot of Shakespeare and, and a lot of left-wing theatre. I worked for a company called The Red Room. Well, that was the play that I was doing mm. um, when when they came to see me. But that doesn't mean to say that I didn't enjoy it, because mm. I, I did. Yeah. Good, good. Did they ever explain why they picked you out um, from, even though you'd not done any children's uh, programmes or theatre before? I think that as an actor, you couldn't do anything. Mm. I mean, you know, um, you train to to transform yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think I was, that's one thing I would say, because obviously I'm not acting at the moment, but that's one thing I was very lucky that I got to do quite a variety of roles. Um, and I always like being different people. I was never very good. At, I'm not that good at being myself. I know that sounds a bit weird, but it's not. And actually, it's funny because when I did Wizardora and they asked me to sort of go on TV, I mean, this is radio and, and I'm a bit older now, but they, they would ask me to go on 
they asked me to do a few things and I just felt really strange and self-conscious um, going on as myself. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. So I like being somebody else. I mean, I'm not, yeah. I, yeah, it's quite nice to be somebody else for a while. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's nice that they gave you that break, you know, and gave you a, a new opportunity. And um, obviously, Wizardora at that point had been going on for a while um, mm. with, with a different actress in the role who, who left. Yeah. Um, now, was it quite daunting to take on a show that had been running for a while? And, um, you know, was it a big responsibility with so many children and mums and dads watching? No, I mean, I didn't think of it like that at all, to be honest. I think um I think it was a it was a lovely experience and um I was treated very well but I think it, it doing a series like that is it was was probably um much less of a responsibility than being in a play every night or um you know doing some of the theater that I'd done and it was it was enjoyable mm -hmm. and I didn't think of it as a responsibility at all because I didn't really, I didn't think of it as something that people watched. I just thought of it as something that might be quite good fun. I never, I never thought about what it was. I just thought, Oh, I get to wave a wand around and jump around and chat to some puppets. But I, I didn't think anybody was watching at home. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. That probably sounds really weird, but <laughs> I didn't. I, I don't know. I, you know, I didn't really think of it like that. Yeah, it was one of CITV's most popular preschool shows for years, so it yeah. would have had millions watching at one point. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I did realise when um, I remember going into Safeways once and this girl asking me for an autograph, and and then I thought, oh gosh, yeah. It, it, but it was something that was quite alien to me. Um, being being an actor, being in the public eye and being an actor was a bit alien. I know that sounds a bit strange, but because I'd spent so many years doing so much theatre, um, I didn't really think of the responsibility. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. That's cool. Um, obviously, like I say, because um, you were the, the second person to play on the CITV series. Yeah. Um, now... Did you find that um, viewers and fans of the show warmed to you and, and they had no problem with there being a change um, or anything like that? No, I, I don't think they did. I think um, I remember when I went for the read through and I said to them that I wanted a different costume because I was different. And um, so I was allowed to go. Um, I went to the King's Road, I remember that, and sort of chose a more modern style uh, of costume i mean i had sort of sparkly trainers and little rah rah skirt things um and little fluffy tops and so i i suppose i was a bit more modern and obviously was i looked different i sounded different i'm from the north i think um wendy's from devon so i don't really know what they thought whether like Wendy Wizardora disappeared or <laughs> I don't know what they I don't know who they thought I was but no I think they 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 thought it was all right I mean I hope they did yeah because I was watching at the to at the time and I can remember there being a change but not being phased by it I mean obviously I could tell different actress but no. um you know no no issues I don't think you really mind at that age really no um, you don't mind no not at all and the the costumes were fantastic a little bit a little bit on the punk side i think you, your costume <laughs> <laughs> well if you saw me now with my new haircut you would say that i i definitely look like a punk actually <laughs> they weren't i didn't think they were very punky at all i mean i could have gone much further <laughs> i think I, I got my first punk clothes when i was about 10 <laughs> i think i am a bit of a punk rocker at heart really um my friend said to me that um, my Wizardora appealed to the dads, <laughs> maybe the dads a bit more, and, and Wendy's, I think the mums preferred Wendy, because I think she was a bit nicer than me. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's cool. That is funny. So um, when you were picked for the show, hmm. I mean, what did you think when you first stepped into the studio saw the set saw what it was about you know was that 
quite a, an amazing experience. Um, well, I've done quite a lot of telly before, mm-hmm. um, before with Adora, but adult, again, adult TV. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, there was some on my first series, there was an amazing floor manager um, called Zana. And she was just this Irish lady with blonde hair. Oh, she was so beautiful. And she looked after me so well. And then the producer, Catherine Kirkwood, she was a woman, another woman. And they were just amazing. And then there was lots of other um, brilliant floor people. Um, and they all were so kind to me. And the, it was it was a very gentle experience, the first experience. It was the first series of Wizardora. And, you know, the fact that we had a female executive producer and who was very nurturing. She was a very nurturing person. She was very, very kind. And then obviously the floor manager was a female as well. And I'm not saying that males aren't, but it, it was a very different experience the next time. And um, so there was nothing about it overwhelming. And, and they were so kind to me. And and the first experience was so kind. Um, and, and then the director, he was very kind as well. And unfortunately, he he's no longer with us. Um, but he was a lovely man as well. And it, yeah, it was a beautiful experience. I just remember just having a lovely time. And then, you know, um, Stan as well. He was a lovely man. Oh, yes, uh, Brian Murphy. Brian, oh, what a lovely man he was. Oh, and then there was another, Michael, the head puppeteer. Mm. Oh, he was a beautiful man. And Barney, he was another puppeteer. He was amazing. You know, the, it was really a very precious time, that first series of Wizardora. Good, yeah. good, good. I'm, I'm glad you uh, you enjoyed working on it. Yeah, and, I did. Um, what about going on to the people that you work with? Um, we've already mentioned Brian Murphy. Um, there was also um, there was Tessa Hatz who did Pippa and oh, yes. Steve Ride who did uh, Tati yeah, Bogle. Were, yeah, both lovely. They were both lovely. Really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so did, w- did you do two series? As, yes, as, yeah. we did two series. And then after the second series, they, they didn't do any more after the second series. Some people say it's really interesting. Some people say, oh, I, I remember reading once, if you ever Googled yourself, I've ne- I, I Googled myself once and I'll never do it again. But um, they did say something about, oh, um, Lizzie McPhee played with Zadora while Wendy van der Plank was on maternity leave and then M- Wendy came back. But that isn't true, actually. The truth is, is that they only my two series were the last and then they didn't do any more. Yes, I've seen that same that same fact being spouted yeah. online, and I've yeah. always I mean I was very little, but I I was pretty sure that that wasn't the truth. I think what it might be a confusion of is that when your run finished, they often had a habit on CITV of rerunning the older ones. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that was the confusion, mm. but yeah, yeah. no, I, I totally thought that was the case. It just doesn't yes. make sense to switch and then switch back. No, no, no. Um, but uh, I'm guessing the reason why wendy left was was for paternity or something like that yes yes and um it's it's interesting actually because i did actually phone her i think she was a bit shocked when i phoned her i just wanted to ask her a couple of questions and she was really nice and you know i really respected her because she said that she just couldn't fit it in with children and and it's true because you know we filmed 36 episodes at a time now that is unheard of and it, it wasn't just, um, you know, it, it wasn't just the volume. The thing with playing with Adora is that the lines you have to learn. I mean, everybody knows when you've worked in TV that you can't fluff the lines. If you fluff the lines, you know, they have to do another take. Time is money. It's thousands of pounds. And, you know, we had very um, large speeches sometimes you know, saying wizardy whiz bang, wom bom bom, you know, all this <laughs> nonsense words that we had to learn. And, you know, you have to know it off by heart. So I, you do have to spend a lot of time learning the lines. So then when I had my own children, I thought, oh, yes, I can see why she just couldn't do this. And I, you know, I really respect her for turning it down and, and concentrating on being a mum. 
she was a lovely lady when I spoke to her. Good, good, good. I'm, I'm glad it was uh, it was a nice experience as she passed the, well, you could say not the baton, but passed the wand to you. Yes, <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> that funny wand that we had. I had the same wand as, as she had, actually. It was just a black stick with a white tip. It was a really unglamorous wand. <laughs> Yeah, they could have made it a bit more sparkly, couldn't they? Yeah, a bit more fancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the budget. It was very basic. Right. It's like they went to budging bargains or something <laughs> for the for the uh, for the ones. I'm guessing they spent the uh, the money on the set and the puppets, which were quite uh, elaborate and fantastic. Uh well, the puppets really were were the um, the work of the puppeteers, and um, they were they were brilliant. Those puppeteers, like they were inspiring. There was there's one guy called Mike, and he was absolutely unbelievable. And they just bring them to life. I mean, it's a real skill. And um, yeah, they're very very talented. Those puppeteers. I can't really remember. What, I think the budget was spent more on on hotels and <laughs> cars. I can't remember what the budget was. I, I, it wasn't a massive budget program actually. I think it was quite a small budget. <laughs> but um, yeah. Good. And um, what was it like having to talk to puppets? Because I'm guessing you have to try and keep your eye line focused on the puppet and not on the puppeteer, just slightly out of your shot. I'm guessing that's a bit of a strange experience at first, having a conversation with a, an inanimate object. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I, I quite like talking to puppets. I mean, I quite like talking to animals. They're, sometimes they're preferable to humans, aren't they? So I didn't, I didn't mind talking to puppets at all. And... Um, I suppose you just have to build a relationship with the puppets. I mean, that's, again, I suppose that comes down to being an actor, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The great thing about being an actor is that anything is possible and everything is part of your imagination. You know, nothing has to be real when you're acting. Um, I think that's why it's it's quite a nice job, really, because it's it's fantasy. Um, so I know it was a long time ago, yeah. Um, but do you have any favourite episodes or moments that you can remember? Oh, yeah. I mean, there was one um, where it was a Christmas edition. And I just, I got the chance to say Merry Christmas, everyone. And I re- it, it was really weird. Like, I really felt it. I felt, I really wished everyone a Merry Christmas. <laughs> and... Um, that was a lovely episode. And then I just remember being in the shop with Stan. You know, because the thing about Brian Murphy is such a great actor. I mean, he's, he was Stan, the corner shop man, but what a brilliant actor. I mean, it's like when you see people on the TV, and even for me as Wizardora, really, people just think, oh, there's Wizardora. But what they don't realise is that you've done years and years of theatre learning your craft. Well, if you can imagine my situation times 20 with someone like Brian Murphy, you know, the man, he was effortless. And and his, if you're a good actor, you know what good actors do. And he's just a great actor. He's very subtle and he's very relaxed. And so all the scenes in the shot with Stan, I just always loved doing scenes in the shop with Stan and he was just such a lovely man just so nice absolutely definitely uh, been around for a long time very versatile actor been in lots of shows and still going strong which is good in between like filming and stuff like that were like any funny moments amongst you as the crew or any accidents or mishaps oh loads loads and all the time there was this really funny man with spiky hair and he used to like set fire to things with the dry ice and <laughs> and oh i used to always get in trouble because i was eating all the i used to eat all the sweets out of the sweet <laughs> jars like the sweet jars were like um i think they'd been there for years and they kept saying lizzie don't eat the sweets but the thing is, when you're hanging around on set for so long, you just keep putting your hands in the sweet jars. Oh, and then there's a lot of um, double entendres. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I think people, because we're adults. Do you know what I mean? We're yeah, all adults. Yeah. There is no, There was no children on set. So there is a lot of fun. And yeah, it's, it was, oh, and there were skateboards, loads of skateboards. <laughs> I don't know what the skateboards were all about. Oh, it was, a, that first series was just... Um, 
It was just full of fun. Yeah. Full. And I think that was, you know, that as I said, that was down to to the Zandra. Yeah. The, the Northern Irish stage manager. <laughs> no, she's the floor manager, sorry. Yeah. Not yeah. stage manager. Yeah. You preferred the, the first run to the, the second one then. <laughs> does, does that, does it sound that obvious? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> I, I really did. It was a completely different experience, the second mm-hmm. one. I mean, the unfortunately for the second one, I just had a car crash. Oh, no. Yeah, it was really bad. So at the time, I was doing a one-woman show, and um, the old director, Alistair, he'd come to see me, and I took him home, and he wasn't doing the second series, and we were about to start filming on the Monday. I think it was the Monday. And, um, And I dropped him off. This is the truth. And a car came round the corner going so fast and smashed into the back of me. Um, I ended up going to hospital and um, and I had to do one more night of a one-woman show. You can't have the night off if you're doing a one-woman show, can you? So, um, and then I was quite ill. And, I, and then when you've had a car crash, I got this uh, solicitor and I went to see the doctor from the solicitor and they said, oh, you can't, you can't do, you can't go back to work. I said, oh, no, I've got to. I start filming on Monday and they said, well, you can't do that. And I said, well, I have to um, because I'd signed a contract and it's insurance and everything. So I was quite vulnerable for the second series. But even so, there was a complete cash change. And, you know, Michael Bayliss, the chief puppeteer, he was missing. There was a couple of the lovely puppeteers, but there were some, you know, there were some different people it was a different experience. Mm-hmm. My, and Steve Ride, I don't think Steve Ride was there that time. I'm not sure if he was or not. Um, but that could have been my, obviously, as I said, I had just had a car crash. Mm-hmm. But I think, I know that if it had been the same team, they would have looked after me and said, oh, you know, and made some allowances. But it was just, um, and Catherine Kirkwood wasn't there either. So um, it was very different, the mm-hmm. second series. Yeah. So I, 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 I didn't mind that it had come to an end. Because <laughs> um, for me, you know, it's very much about the experience when you're making something. Um, it, it's I always think that when I was acting, and even now, it's who you're working with, whether you get a nice cup of tea, and, and whether you have fun. And But interestingly enough, I think that the second series that I did, I was much better um as wizardora i think i was more relaxed and and more experienced and and probably because i just had this car crash was a bit distracted you're always better at acting i think when you're a bit distracted no that's fair enough i I understand totally um you know and i I guess i I guess as well you'd built up a rapport with the original group and it's having to start all over again isn't it it's uh, it can be can be a little bit daunting to do um, so uh, the one thing I was going to ask, actually, because you, you mentioned that you've got children of your own. Have they yeah. ever watched it or seen it? Just no. it? Oh, my gosh. It's so weird, isn't it? Because <laughs> sometimes people tell them yeah. that I was with Sadora and they're just like, ah. Not again. <laughs> no, they say, oh, they say that, mom, you are so rubbish. They say, <laughs> <laughs> they say you were, so, they just say, oh, my God, mom, you're such a rubbish actress. <laughs> Yeah. They do, they do. They just say that I was rubbish all the time, and they like they see me in other things, and they just say that I'm rubbish. <laughs> and um, I think they're just really embarrassed. But it it is funny actually because my partner he he's a journalist and he works away all the time. So one of us had to give up work, and um, as he said, he earned more money than me, so I had to give up um, because it's very hard being an actress and a mom if you if your partner's not around so once i became a mom i just um i gave up acting so they never knew i never tell people that um i was sometimes i do you know sometimes when people actually ask me i think well that's what you did i'm not showing off that's what i did as a job that's how i earned my living that's how i bought our flat um you know And uh, I did have a a great time being an actress. And, you know, maybe once when my children have grown up, I might go back. I don't know. 
but um it, it it was a it was a lovely time being an actress but very very interesting um i mean obviously as we're in a, a digital age now and mm. people have the ability to convert vhs tapes i'm sure you're aware that there are many episodes on youtube for all to see if they ever want to uh, look back on it which I'm sure well, is a bit strange to see. <laughs> yes, I don't. I don't think they want to see me. Well, I think they have. I've told you I've, they have seen me and said I was rubbish. <laughs> so yeah. And you've never been tempted to go and watch one yourself. Well, I went on once on YouTube and watched a bit of Wizardora, and I was think, oh. But then there was this um, something afterwards that started having a conversation about me and. Someone said that I looked like a scraghead or something, and I was thinking, what? "Oh my, yeah!" It was really interesting how vicious people are. So ever since then, I just don't, I just mm-hmm. don't go online because I just, you That's know, the, uh, the thing, it's yeah. amazing. I was just like, "Wow, people really spend their time um, saying mean things about people. Why do people do that? Why?" Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, they don't know me, and and. You know, I might have had a bad morning. My dog might have died or something. And you're saying these mean things about me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so then after that, I never, ever looked at myself again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the that's the, the one problem. Because I, I don't think people realise that there is the off chance that the person in that programme might just look themselves up and watch back. Um, you know, especially as, you know, we've, the internet's become such a big thing in the last 10, 15 yeah. years. And a lot of people do post old shows up that there were fans of and that other fans can look back on or anybody that's just, you know, feeling a bit nostalgic. And yeah, people make up these strange theories on things or stories or their opinions. Yeah. And it, it is bizarre. You get it with any... I mean, you get it with everything, but it just seems to be something that's unfortunately happens a lot when it comes to um, old shows. And it's like, well, you, you never know. That person might just be might just be reading. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and just because you've been on telly for a bit, I mean, doesn't mean to say that you don't have feelings. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So um, another question I wanted to ask actually about Wizardora yeah. is... Um, about seven years ago, CITV celebrated its 30th anniversary and they did a weekend of old shows. Did you know that they repeated one of your episodes? No, I didn't know. I didn't know, honestly. It was really weird, actually, because um, a friend of mine sent me sent me a text saying she'd seen me and I thought, oh, she's, I don't know. I had no idea they did. I had no idea. What episode was it then? The episode was called, because I did literally view it last night because yeah. I was doing research, um, it was called Who is Important? And the episode was about Stan wanting to open an extension up in his shop, but it was actually a cupboard or a shelf. Oh, and he had like right. a grand opening and he wanted somebody important to open it. And I can't remember who he picks now, but everybody thinks it's going to be them. Like, I'm important because I'm this and, oh, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember that one. I know you did many. Uh, but so that's the one many. they picked. That's the one they picked. Um, yeah um was it good was it a nice one it was good it was good to watch again it was you know strange watching it because <laughs> I, I i'm a very nostalgic but i mean i don't sit at home and watch them all day but yeah. this one time where they said you know for the 30th birthday we're going to just stick all the old shows on for one weekend i didn't leave the house for two days i you wow. know i um, wow. i was just glued to it you know just enjoying the nostalgia and it was just strange oh. to see it back on and also uh, televisions have changed you know the flat screen yeah. uh, the high definition i mean it was just weird to watch it again um to, uh, and then everything else that they repeated as well it was and it was, it was really pleasant and the, the one thing that was nice about it is pretty much every show that was shown trended mm. and was watched it was citv's highest audience share that they'd had in in years because it was oh, mostly really? it was mostly 20 plus somethings watching it not children so oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, they did repeat one um, of of yours, um, and uh, that was that was really cool. Um, oh, that's nice then. <laughs> so they did. They actually gave the second wizard or a go as well. Then. <laughs> yeah, they didn't actually show any with Wendy. They would only shown the one because um, it was like one show, uh, one episode. Because um, they filled like the weekend with so many shows that it was all they were able to really fit in oh. over two days. So they just they just picked um, one at random. I suppose I don't know. I don't know what the the process was behind it, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was good to see. Um, I 
so I mean that must have been strange that you didn't know about it and suddenly you no. get a text saying you're on the telly. <laughs> well, no, she didn't say I was on the. T- I think it was about a week later. Oh, okay. But I think at that point in my life, I was so far away. Was it this seven years ago? This was 2013 when yeah, it was the 30th oh, birthday. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have. Yeah, I was I was so ensconced with with the uh, with 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 being a mother at that point. I. It's very hard work being a mother. <laughs> oh my god! It made with a door look like a sort of like a holiday in the Bahamas. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I didn't know it was on now. No, it's cool. And also, they did they did release one on on video at the time. They did these videos called CITV Favorites, which was like an episode of each show that was popular at the time. They did again. They released one, and it was it was one of yours. Um, and I believe people have put that on YouTube as well. So. Oh really? <laughs> oh well. Maybe I'll go on YouTube one day when I'm feeling confident Brave, that no one's yeah. going to call me a, a, a skaghead or something. Oh, it's terrible. Me. No, I know. no. In in the words of the theme tune, Wizardora, we adore her. Oh, <laughs> well, that's very sweet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do remember doing that theme tune popping up and down. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed doing the theme tune. Yeah, because they seem to re-record it every time there was a cast change. Because I've, yeah, I've watched, um, I've watched like a couple like through the years, and you notice that yeah. the theme tune sounds a bit different to each series, and they have more yeah. characters. And yeah, that must have been quite good fun. Because like you say, you know, like you pop up and down, you run around, yeah, and we did. We literally we just kept popping up and down, up and down. That was really good fun. That yeah, there's a, there's a bit yeah. in it where um, oh, where like you come into the shot and you bump into Tatty Bogle and you fall um, down. Yes, and then. Yes. Yes. Hangle pops up between you in like tuts. <laughs> oh, that was Michael Bayless Hangle. Yeah. That was the lovely Michael Bayless. Bless him. <laughs> I don't know where he is, but oh, what a lovely man he was. Good stuff. It was a good show, and it's been great to hear your memories about it. And I'm glad that you had a, a good time with it. And uh, and uh, you know, it, although you're not acting at the moment, I hope in the future you get the chance to. And uh, all the best in the future. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, thank you very much, Jack. It's very nice to have a nice chat about Wizardora. So, Lizzie, it's been great chatting today and uh, thank you for taking part. Ah, oh, thank you so much for having me, Jack, and all the best for your show and everything. Thank you to Lizzie for that great chat. And I also must say thank you to Sean at Wizzo Productions who made this interview possible. Well, that's it for another series. Another eight wonderful episodes all completed. Now, a lot of you will be wondering... Is it coming back? Well, yes, it is. There will be a Series 4 later in the year, but I am going to take a bit of a break first, I think. Thank you for listening, and thank you to all of my guests, and thanks to those who have listened and liked what I do. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>